I think um, part of part of my uh, standard speech now is I talk to them about um, the HPV vaccine because I really think it's important to protect them going forward. Um, uh, I look at their their habits as far as social habits, drinking and alcohol, and always comes into play in, in uh, smoking. Um, and then dietary wise, I think there's always a lot of social pressure on women for, for their diet. Um, calcium, I'm always driving home that point because you build your peak bone mass up to age 25 or 30. So if your calcium intake isn't great up until that time, then you start you know, losing bone mass. So you really have to kind of stock up uh, in your uh, teens and early 20s. Um, and and I, I think the physical and emotional benefit of a regular exercise routine can't be um, overestimated or overstated. So I really do um, kind of audit with their personal health habits as far as exercise. I think um, the women who are uh, routinely active um, do a lot better cognitively and emotionally than folks who, who don't, who have a sporadic physical activity. ties into you know, the, the social pressures that we see. Um, I, I think um, we can stress that more in the, in, in the uh, educational environment during health class. Um, you are what you eat, sounds like a cliche, um, but I think we can go uh, a lot deeper into um, healthy eating habits um, when kids are in high school because it'll be something that they'll be much more um, in tune to when they get more of the age of reason in college, which, you know, I'm sure you went to college. Um, uh, our habits aren't the best. Uh, in college years. Well, um, if they have kids, to reinforce the messages we just talked about with, with their kids, I think teaching that kind of makes them think, well, I better um, practice what I'm preaching. So I, I think teaching it gives a certain sense of um, responsibility to the parents um, so they will follow their own advice. And then I think screening is, is more important as you get into your mid to uh, late 30s. So, um, you know, uh, mammography, um, cardiovascular disease, I think everybody's always worried about the the scary monster of breast cancer because it's so sinister or any kind of cancer because it's lurks out there in the background. But um, tenfold uh, p women die of cardiovascular disease than they do for um, breast cancer. And, and that's something very much in our control um, as far as uh, diet and exercise and going to your, your doctor for injections. Well, I, I, I think um, the, the sexuality is much more um, apparent than people think. You know, I, I think they see a, a postmenopausal woman. Um, most folks, I, I, I think, will uh, make the presumption that they're not sexually active. And I can assure you that's not the case. Um, I think it comes down to the relationship. If, if um, they're in a stable, uh, monogamous relationship. Um, that's the, the key to continued sexual activity. And I, I see that a lot. Now, sometimes they'll run into to trouble with vaginal dryness and things like that to where the, the physical activity is somewhat uh, of a discomfort. And, you know, with uh, local estrogen creams and things like that, um, we're able to help them. But um, uh, I, I think a, uh, a vigorous sex life usually persists well into the uh, to the 80s if uh, people are lucky enough to have this password. They tend to focus more on their families not a, and, and not maintaining themselves. And also there's, a, I think, a, a health misconception that, gee, I'm getting older, my metabolism is slowing and things of that sort. Almost kind of giving in to I'm getting older, so therefore I shouldn't be as healthy. Um, there's not a lot of good data out there that suggests that your metabolism does slow. It's more the sedentary lifestyle sets in, 
and kind of that uh, nickel and dime eating, you know, not your major meals, but friend comes over for coffee, we bond over coffee and cake, let's face it. So small things like that uh, accrue over time. So, um, you know, little things like diabetes, high blood pressure, things that are very much uh, lifestyle diseases start to creep into the picture. And I find women will kind of say, well, I'm getting older and it's kind of expected. So again, one of the social norms that, um, that we've been kind of taught to accept, but it's not true. And I always try to counsel my patients in that direction that you now it doesn't have to be that way. It's a little harder because you kind of feel like, well, I'm 50, I, I deserve to have that.